Hello everyone and welcome to another interesting case, this time of a pediatric patient who presented with hemolytic uremic syndrome complicated by acute pancreatitis and a pancreatic pseudocyst. The patient is a two and a half year old girl weighing 12 kilograms. She presented seven weeks ago with vomiting, bloody diarrhea and fever after a family holiday abroad sugar toxin producing E. coli, serotype 0157, also known as STEC, was isolated in the stool culture. She developed hemolytic uremic syndrome, which is a known complication of STEC infection. The hemoglobin dropped to 64 grams per litre, with features of hemolysis, including a raised bilirubin, which was predominantly unconjugated and a raised reticulocyte count. The white cell count was also raised at 33. The platelet levels dropped to 25 with a normal INR. She developed acute kidney injury with a urea of 26 and a creatinine of 294. Apart from the raised bilirubin of 190 micromoles per litre, the rest of the liver biochemistry was initially normal. She was transferred to a specialist centre and treated with blood transfusion and hemodialysis. An abdominal ultrasound showed evidence of acute pancreatitis and biliary sludge. There was no abdominal pain and the amylase was elevated at 195. She required a sliding scale insulin for a few days. A week later, a further ultrasound scan was done and showed a 5.8 cm by 3.2 cm pancreatic pseudocyst. Here is the first ultrasound showing pancreatic inflammation and here is the second ultrasound a week later showing the pancreatic pseudocyst. The drone discontinued but the pattern became more obstructive with a marked elevation of the alkaline phosphatase. Ursodeoxycholic acid was commenced but did not make much of a difference. Two days ago, the bilirubin was 85 micromoles per litre with an alkaline phosphatase of 780, which is markedly elevated. The hemoglobin settled at 92 and the renal function returned to normal. An MRCP two days ago showed an ongoing pancreatic pseudocyst measuring 6 centimetres in diameter and compressing the lower bile duct. The coronal views clearly show the large pancreatic pseudocyst compressing the lower common bile duct with dilated common hepatic duct and intrahepatic ducts above the compression. There is also a stone in the common hepatic duct. The transverse and sagittal views show the pseudocyst behind the stomach. Hence, an ERCP was performed under general anesthesia with a view to draining the bile duct. We were able to use an adult duodenoscope. The current ESGE guidelines state that it is okay to use an adult duodenoscope in children weighing more than 10 kilograms or who are over one year of age. The scope goes down surprisingly easily and we find ourselves in the stomach. There is no obvious big bulge of the stomach wall. The scope is then passed through the pylorus and the papilla is found easily in the second part of the duodenum. Bile can be seen flowing from the papillary orifice. The bile duct is cannulated using a wire guided method.
The cholangiogram shows a very dilated common hepatic duct and intrahepatic ducts above a 3 cm stricture in the lower common bile duct. A small biliary sphincterotomy is performed. Next, a 9 to 12 millimeter balloon catheter is used to trawl the bile duct. The balloon is inflated to 12 millimeters and pulled out through the papilla. Some sludge and other debris comes out with the first pull. Also, it is noted that the 12 mm balloon travels through the stricture quite easily as we would expect with external compression by a cyst. Finally, a 7 French by 3 cm double pigtail stent is inserted into the bile duct. There is good drainage of bile after the deployment of the stent. The patient remained well post ERCP and went home the next day after seven weeks in hospital. The plan is to do a further ultrasound in four weeks to assess the cyst and see if it needs drainage. The stent will be removed or changed in six weeks. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. See you in the next one. Bye for now.